What advice would you give to someone who has experienced spiritual abuse in the church and is wondering how to move forward and get involved in a new church community? Yeah, man, I, I hate that there's even a need for the question, but it's just a reality that, you know, we're all sinful, broken people and uh, that manifests itself in the church as well as it does anywhere else in the world. And there are, um, church leaders and communities that are really unhealthy and can really result into some hurtful and destructive and devastating at times experiences that really grieve the heart of God and grieve Christ our King because it's so far removed from what the church is supposed to be. Right? Church is supposed to be a place for healing. It's supposed to be a place for wholeness and community and fellowship and growth and a place to be encouraged and challenged and, and have one's giftings uh, developed and deployed. And it's just not always like that. And when we experience spiritual abuse or uh, distortion or, or just sometimes even as much as just disappointment with leaders that, um, don't show up at their best, it can be real disillusioning that we, um, you know, expect something different and it's hard to know how, what to make of situations where it just doesn't materialize and where sometimes those shortcomings, flaws, mistakes, um, brokenness of those leaders, it's turned around and and blamed on us, right? And projected on us in a way that can distort the scriptures and can really leave us feeling hurt and confused and wounded by those that were supposed to be there for us. We're supposed to be able to trust and feel safe with and be encouraged by. So I, I just grieve with you that loss of what you needed and hoped for in a church community. I want to encourage you yeah, that the, the Lord grieves with you as well, that that's not the experience that he wants his children to have with his body, and that there's a desire in the king's heart to want to help you find healing around that and for you to find a place to plug into his kingdom and in his body where you can be fed and nourished and where you can heal and where you can fulfill the purposes and good works that he created you for before time began. Part of the journey and process of that is recognizing the grief that's a part of experiencing that kind of loss in your life the loss of uh, respect, the kind of loss of sense of safety, the loss of trust in leaders uh, that uh, comes with the experience of spiritual abuse in your life. There's a need to, um, to grieve that, recognize that there's sadness that's a part of that. There's anger that's a part of that. And anger is really valid emotion that God's wired our bodies to experience emotion. All emotion uh, gives us information about our relationship to things that are happening in us and around us. And when things happen and when we experience things that aren't right, that violate the heart of God, that violate God's design, we should be angry about that injustice, that it's angering to the heart of God for his name and for his body to be violated. And for us to have a heart that's consistent with his heart, we're going to be angry about those things also. Like it's consistent with the heart of God for us to be angry about injustice. It's consistent with the heart of God to uh, be angry about his word and his identity and his name being distorted uh, and misrepresented within the body through spiritual abuse. That those are... Uh, things that we should get angry about. So it's rather than trying to shut that down or shut that out, it's good to acknowledge what that's about and to wrap language around that 
and to be able to share that with some of the safe people in your life. He says, this is, this makes me mad. It's not supposed to be like this. This isn't how God designed the church to function and to operate. I shouldn't experience these things. Others shouldn't experience these things from those that are supposed to be revealing the Father to us. And so it's good to validate and to voice the anger that you feel around that, as well as just the grief and the sadness. There's loss of relationship that happens in spiritual abuse also. Finding a new church community, a loss of confidence and trust in one's own judgment and ability to find safe people and safe community. So when you thought that you were in a healthy and safe community and were under the leadership of those that you could trust and they turned out not to be, there's that, how do I even know I have the ability to recognize you know, about what's healthy and unhealthy? How do I know I'm not going to end up back in the same situation again, in a different building, different group of people, same situation? So it's a scary thing. And there's, it's good to acknowledge that and to voice that as part of the grief that's taking place. And to recognize that there are safe and healthy people out there. There's no perfect people, no perfect churches, no perfect communities. If you hang around people long enough in any community, you're going to be wounded by them. That injury and repair is a part of intimate relationship. You know, Tori, if you and I are friends for any length of time, I'm going to say something or do something that's wounding to you. Not on purpose, not because I'm trying to be hurtful, but because I'm sinful and I'm imperfect, I'm broken. And that injury, if we're going to be close enough in relationship to where I have any access to your heart at all, that you care at all about the relationship, I am going to cause injury. That's part of it. And hopefully in a healthy relationship dynamic, when you feel injured, when you feel hurt by me, you have the ability to go, hey, Josh, that didn't feel good. I don't like the way that experienced that. Here's how that impacted me. And me on my side, I'm going to be humble and be able to hear that and care about how my words or actions impacted you and to be able to engage in repair and offer apology for that and take ownership for that and want to demonstrate that how you experience me and our relationship matters to me. And we're able to repair the relationship from that injury. When you experience that organizationally or with leaders, then you come and you bring those hurts to them. If they uh, don't respond with humility and don't respond with a care and empathy, then that's really wounding. And that's a good indication that they don't have the safety to warrant continuing in relationship with them. It's a good indicator for intimate relationship, uh, safe relationship. There are people out there, there are communities out there, there are churches, there are leadership that uh, you can um, be safe with and that can restore your uh, hope in mankind and in the church and really experience God's grace. So that's my prayer for you, that you would be able to find a community that would be a part of that healing process for you. Yeah, you know, this question comes from a place of wanting to move forward, of wanting to get involved with a new church community. My question would be, what would you say, Josh, to the people that have been, you know, created this like hard space in their heart and don't want to move forward, don't want to get back in the community? You hear this a lot, you know, like, I don't want to go to church because I've been wounded and I've been hurt, Uh which is real and valid. But what would you say? to that Josh yeah yeah no it's it's uh totally valid and normal for us to want to isolate when we feel hurt you know in any kind of relationship to kind of pull back in a self-protective sort of way Um, and yet we're designed to be engaged in community like we have a, a need for that and if we 
uh, don't engage that has an impact on us, that we don't have the things that we need uh, in order to grow and be healthy. That as people, we're, we're kind of like plants. You know, the Bible uses a lot of farming and agricultural uh, imagery and pictures. And as a human, we, uh, like a plant, lack all the things that we need in order to grow. Like um, a sapling, a plant, you know, uh, isolated and on its own uh, will die. That it needs uh, soil to sink roots into, that it draws nutrients in from. It needs uh, rain that comes from outside of itself and is absorbed in. It needs sunlight. And that all these things from outside of the plant get absorbed into the plant from its surrounding and give it what it needs in order to grow and bear fruit and, and be fruitful as a plant. And we as people are, are very much like that, that uh, while in our Western culture, we like to be very individualistic and think that I don't need anybody and I don't need anything. And our, our advancements in technology and society help facilitate that delusion, you know, that we have the ability to kind of um, pull out of our garage in the morning and, and drive to work or now even work from home remotely uh, and not have to interact with anybody. Uh, we can have Amazon deliver whatever we need to our porch and not have to uh, rely on anybody. Uh, we can watch televisions about relationships uh, without actually having them ourselves. And we can have this sense of being independent to not needing anybody in a way that if you go back a hundred years or in much of the world, that kind of independence is not really possible that you rely on people in the community for day-to-day -day life and survival. But we're not designed to live in isolation and we can't be fully healthy. We can't grow. We can't bear fruit without having roots kind of uh, integrated into rich soil from which we can draw in resources from outside of ourselves uh, that empower us and enable us to grow. So I would just, uh, and we all we feel that, you know, like, like the hurt and the greed can cause us to want to isolate. But if we're honest with ourselves, we recognize the void that is a part of our life by not having uh, real community of relationships. Thank you.